Hello, welcome back to Green Hill Junction. Uh, so, this video is going to be all about building the incline up to the what will be the upper level. Um, I've kind of delayed this because I was thinking actually not to do an upper level. Uh, and I'll explain a bit why. Um, so, when I first started planning this, I always thought right, I want an upper level because I like seeing tracks crossing tracks. Uh, hence the reason I've got a bit of station here without anything in it because this is going to be the upper station and then it'll cross the tracks uh, across there and then across and across the tracks again and coming back down. Now that was fine until I built that bridge uh, which you will have seen in a previous video. Now that was just that was just a bit of fun for me. I'd never done a sketch build like that before. I didn't expect that it come out as anything great. Um, and in my opinion it's came out absolutely brilliant. And the issue is that the, the upper level bridge is going to go across the, the front of that gap, so like across there kind of thing. Excuse my big finger. Um, and then it might block my view of that other bridge um, when I'm operating the trains from the middle. So I've been thinking for weeks now about what to do, do I put an upper level in, do I, do I make it taller than I originally planned? And what I thought was, well, I could make it um, basically 4 inches tall, so 10.2 centimetres tall. And that way the bridge would sit just above the top level of, uh, of the girders and I could see under it. Um, now my plan all along was to use Woodland Scenics 2% risers, which I've got here. Um, because it just makes a nice smooth incline. I use them on my old layout uh, and they work great and I had another incline that I, I made myself at a wood and it worked but it, it wasn't that smooth and it was a bit difficult to create and so I decided to go wood and scenic. Now the reason I went with a 2% is because some of my locals struggled up anything steeper than that particularly um, particularly that one there, City, City of Bristol, uh, when it was pulling just three coaches and I actually dug through all my stock and found out I actually had five coaches for it. Um, so, yeah, I stuck with 2%, which caused problems with the height of the upper level because all that from there, right the way around there and up to there is uh, 12 foot. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 foot, sorry, of incline. And that only takes up to 8.8 .8 centimetres there. So if I wanted the other two foot in, it would basically take it to the end of those points, uh, packets, and the bridge is due to come across there. So it means I would have no room for, you know, the junction system that I've sort of planned there. Um, you know, to get the incline to join up with the upper level. So that brought me back to, do I really need an incline and an upper level? And ultimately I decided, yes I do. Or yes I want it. I don't need it, but I want it. So um, I have settled for the upper level being 8.8 .8 centimetres um, above the lower level, which to be honest ties in with the, the height of these Metcalf bridges because um, again when things were going to be like 10 or 10.2 centimetres tall I was struggling to find any bridges or tunnels that were that tall So and I like the Metcalf stuff so I thought right just make it 8.8 .8 centimetres I mocked up the new bridge over there because um, I've got a bowstring bridge to put in which I'll be making a video of as well um, and it doesn't it doesn't block the view of the of the, the girder bridge too much at that level. And at the end of the day I can go under that table and sit between the table and the window and see stuff go across the girder bridge. So yeah, upper level is a go and two percent risers up to eight point eight centimetres is what we're going with. So um let's see, I've used this stuff before, it's really good. Um, I'm going to start it, I'm going to lift this bridge and then lift this track and just start it where you see it is so it'll just start to rise underneath this it's okay, I've checked there's enough clearance um, and then it'll go off 
Now because, uh, let me zoom back out actually, right, now because this is all going to be my village and the village is going to be on the upper level, I've got to be careful of where the, um, basically where the incline, um, how do I say this, where the incline is going to be too, too tall to fit under the, the upper level which will be 8.8 centimetres and that's to that point there. So all this will be covered but then I'll need to have a tunnel mouth here where it comes out and then the rest is going to be uncovered all the way up to there. Still haven't decided if I'm covering all this area yet um, for the village. I'm kind of thinking not. Uh, I maybe want to cut it across there um, sort of thing because I think that's too big an area for a village but that's for the future. The main thing is to get this incline in now. Now what I'm going to do is I have the foam tack glue that basically gets recommended for this. Um, I've not got too much of it left to be honest from the last one um, but I also have the good old Gorilla Glue which I'm, I'm going to use as well uh, when this runs out. Now the instructions say you can use this in two ways. You can either just uh, put it on the foam and then stick the foam to the cork and that gives you about 15 minutes time to move it about and um, you know position it correctly. The other way you can do it is put it on the foam, put it on the cork and then stick the two together and that's virtually an instant bond. So. I'm not going to do that because um, I want to make sure this is in the right position and the curves are nice and gentle. So I'm going to stick it to the foam only, stick the foam down, move it into position and then get the good old canned food on top to uh, hold it all in place. Uh, so uh, right, I'll set it up on the tripod um, and we'll start laying this incline. So back in a bit. Okay, I have raised this track a little bit. Um, I've also marked out where the track was because I want to continue this curve and then I've got a couple of marks here where I'm wanting the incline to start so I'll basically sit there and then it's going to gently curve around um, avoiding the edge of the table so all I need to do is turn this over and whoa, <laughs> goes quite mobile not put that much glue on. Oops. So just I glue every single bit. I don't know if you have to. Um, certainly I did this in the last incline and it was very stuck because my plan when I dis dismantled the last layout was to save the incline pieces and reuse them and they didn't come off whatsoever. Um, ended up having to get a chisel to actually get them off. Um, because at that point I thought I was going to save my baseboards, so I just didn't end up doing either. Um, so, yeah, just glue it like that, turn it over, and just stick it down. It really is that simple. And like I say, because I've, uh, I've only glued one side, then it gives you the opportunity to move this about. And it is quite flexible. Um, if I use a bit that's not been stuck, I mean, you can really, really bend this if you want, but bear in mind, the tighter the curve, the harder it is for your locals to get up the incline. So you really, really want to either avoid curves on an incline or um, make them as gentle as you possibly can, which is what I'm doing. So I'm quite happy with the position of that, I think that's quite a nice curve. I've got plenty of room between the tracks. If I bring this back over, that's just going to go nicely up, up the middle, following the, the original path. Um, and if I put on the other one, I can con continue a gentle curve. Um, it's basically the same curve as this is going in uh, onwards with the with the incline. So it's that easy. You just you literally do just stick it down, and then. Good old, good old cans to just hold it in place while the glue goes off. Um, so yeah, so that's that's uh, weighing an incline. All I'll do is I will set up the camera so you can see most of the incline going down, and we'll just do a we'll just do a fast time video because um, it's not really uh, that exciting to see um, when you're just going 
bits of polystyrene down, but I suppose it'll be good to see the, the incline come along. So um, yeah, that'll hopefully be the next video. Okay, so hopefully uh, those videos worked and I was able to show a sort of quick time laying of the uh, the incline. Um, so that that took me all 15 minutes to do that. That's it's not difficult. It was literally sticking polystyrene down. Um, you'll have seen me out with the uh, the track setters, just checking on the on the curve very roughly. I have to admit, but. The thing is, I know that these curves of the actual track are nice and gentle, um, the outside one in particular. Um, so you can see that the incline basically follows that outside track um, until it gets to there, where the inside track curves in and that continues going. So that's that's an even gentler curve than that there. Um, so And then it straightens out. And it'll just continue up to the end there. Now the junction system I have in mind is there's going to be a right hand point there and then this is meant to represent, but I've knocked it all over the place, um, this is meant uh, to represent a double slip crossover just like these ones and then another another point there. Um, so that's my junction. The idea being that the two tracks, the two main lines will come across here. One will go into that point and continue down there. The other one will come into one end of the crossover and cross over and continue. Um, but by having the double slip crossover here, it means that the, the inside line can cross right over and have stuff going up and down the incline. Um, the outside line can do likewise um, and the reason I put a point in there is because as with many modelers I have a habit of buying too many trains um, see something you like and go oh yeah I, I'll take that if you have the money of course um, and I've just recently bought another set um, which I will do a video on shortly once I get it um, chipped and running but anyway, um, the reason for this point is because I'm going to have a siding that comes off and comes across the bridge and then stops just before the canal river scene or something like that. And that's going to be four foot long. So it means it gives me it gives me a sort of I don't know, a relief siding, would you call it that? Um, that sits alongside the main lines 
um, so something can sit in there um, and I think that sort of simple junction is going to give me a lot of flexibility with things coming up and down the incline an extra parking space for lack of a, a better phrase for a train um, without having a big complicated thing going on here I wanted to keep this as simple as possible um, now some of you may be sitting there going oh my god he's just laid all that, he's stuck it all down, he's not tested it or anything like that and you're right it's a small risk I've taken however I used the 2% incline in my last layout I know all my trains will go up a 2% incline um, and the one I had in my old layout had much sharper corners than this and the one that struggled the most was City of Bristol so I am fairly confident, <laughs> famous last words, that I can lay track on that and get everything get everything up and down. Um, so I'm going to leave that um, overnight to dry and then I will lay cork on top of it and put some track down and I'll do a video of that and then hopefully show a train going up and down it. Um, so yeah, hope you've uh, hope you liked what you've seen so far. Um, and like I say, next video will be sticking cork down, putting track down and uh, and then finally after that, running a train. Uh, so I'll come back to you when we're doing that. Okay, welcome back. Uh, so the glues went off and the incline is in. And it's absolutely solid. It won't move at all, which is ideal. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cork it and I'm going to use the same technique as I used with the underway for the track. So it's the same 2mm cork um, cut into 2.5 wide, two inch wide strips, which is the width of the polystyrene. And then I have cut the tabs in it so that it will bend around the corner and cover up all the top of the polystyrene right the way around. Um, and I've still got some of the, the foam tack glue left. So I'm just going to use that up because I'm not going to need that for anything else. Um, and yeah, and then I'll be ready to go. And then the, what I will do is I will cut the track underway just there, so that it should flow seamlessly onto the onto the incline and avoid that horrible sort of bump you sometimes get um, at the start of inclines. Um, so I'll crack on with that and. Uh, I'll show you once it's done. Right, welcome back. And I've now got the track provisionally laid on top of the cork. Um, I've just pinned that down. Obviously that's not going to work in the polystyrene, but it's enough to hold it in place until I glue it down and test the track. Um, so what I'm going to do is I have the problem child, as I call it, City of Bristol, set up with three carriages. Uh, we'll see how it goes up this. Uh, to be honest, if it doesn't work, I've not got much of an option because all the polystyrene's tacked down. But I might as well set her off and see what happens. Well that's good, no problems at all with the three carriages. So I'll uh, I'll uh, send her back down and I'll hook on another two um, because I've actually got five carriages that usually run with, with that local uh, and we'll see how they do with that. So back in a sec. Okay, got her set up with five carriages and um, so I'll just do exactly the same thing and see what happens, see if there's any slipping with the wheels.
Okay, that wasn't too bad. Um, I don't know if you heard it, just when it was coming round there, there was a sort of clunk, clunk, clunk of the wheels, um, starting to struggle to get traction uh, and probably almost derailing. But still got up at a pretty slow speed, um, so that's good. Um, so that's the reason I went for a 2% incline. Um, anything more than that, and the steam locals, I don't know about the electrics uh, or the diesels because I never run them, steam locals really struggle on anything bigger than a 2% and you can see I've not got very tight corners at all um, so yep it works that's the best, that's the best news um, so I'll, uh, I'll stick with that track then um, and uh, yeah that's the, the incline done um, so get one with the sticking and I'll, uh, I'll show you it once it's all done right um, before I get down to sticking the track, I actually forgot that Cock of the North um, was very unhappy with inclines on my last layout. Um, ironic, considering this was built to do the inclines and declines on the East Coast line between sort of Edinburgh and Aberdeen. So I've hooked her up to five carriages. Um, and let's see how she gets on. Just select it. Hopefully I'll get select the right direction. Nope, I didn't. Right. Off she goes, let's see what happens. Yep, so down there. Still making it though. Again, doesn't like the curve. Really doesn't like that curve. So I think we could really describe that as uh, made that but protested about it. Um, so what I'll do is send her back down, take off two carriages and see how she does with three. So back to back. Okay, set her up with three. Um, so nothing for it but to set her off and see what happens. Again, not overly happy on the corners at all. Got a bit more power. Oops. <laughs> okay, <laughs> barring the, uh, the unintentional derailment. Made it again, but again, protests. So Again, showing my point of the 2% incline for the steamers. Um, I know there's a system you can buy of magnets that you stick underneath the track and then you stick it like magnets underneath the train and it sort of holds the metal wheels and the metal rails closer together and improves the traction, but is it really necessary for me? I don't think so. You know, I don't really run any more than three carriages and if I do in the local struggles, I'm not really going to be that fussed if I have to take two off, get the train up to the upper level and um, and then hook them back up again. Um, so, no, nah, I'm not going to bother with the, the magnet system. I can't remember who makes it, but it's definitely, I've seen, I'm sure Dean Park uh, used it on his in, incline. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy. It works. Um, so, I know I said in the previous video that I'll... Uh, I'll stick it all down and, and show you it working again, but it's not going to be any different, is it? It's, the track's going to be stuck in that position. Um, so I think I'll just wrap this video up here. Uh, so thanks for watching. Um, hopefully you've learned something about inclines, how to put them in, uh, maybe how not to put them in, seeing as I winged it a little bit. Um, and I've also shown you the amount of space you need for a 2% incline just to get it from zero away down there up to 8.8 centimetres over there, it's 14 foot um, and like I say the 2% incline definitely for steamers is, is about the maximum you can go to without going for some sort of magnet system. Um, so thanks for watching, um, leave any comments you have, 
uh, please subscribe to the channel um, to keep up to date with the progress on the way out and uh, speak to you all soon. Cheers!